What's going on, Atlanta Falcons football fans? Hey, it's Pound for Pound ATL, and of course, you know, I'm Toby D. I got my man GR over there, and we got our third partner in the house named Jonathan. Y'all know who he is already because he's been on Pound for Pound before, and he is no stranger to the show. What's going on, fellas? Oh, doing man. good. How you doing, man? Yep. Just uh, taking it easy as far as the night goes. We are in our, our bye week, so we decided to, to do a, just a recording instead of going live, kind of um, you know, step back a little bit, you know, take a, take a break in, in a way, uh, you know, as you know, you saw the social media team Atlanta, you know, for the Falcons say that that's what they had done all last week. So we're kind of doing a little bit of the same this week. Um, but with the news dropping, uh, I put out a video on Thursday, uh, fully in the midst of the flu, uh, but I couldn't leave it be, um, about the news that dropped. You know, Desmond Ritter getting named the starter became official today mm-hmm. and be remiss about not getting it all together and, and talking about it. So, Toby, what's up, man? Ritter's going get to get a start. It's about doggone time. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm just going to be honest. I feel like Ritter should have started after week four against the Browns. Yeah. Um, where you run the ball 13 straight times. Mm-hmm. and don't allow Mariota to even get his hands on it to really throw the ball much that game because he was sucking. But, you know, hey, no bye week, so they didn't want to rush Ritter in there and, and, and force him into the fire too soon. But I, I think this is the perfect time. Uh, I'm not too excited about him facing the Saints in his first game, but I know he has that leadership quality and, and the skill set to be able to handle the pressure that he will be under going into that Superdome on Sunday. Yeah, the you're starting getting your first start as a rookie on the road in a you know one of the few rivalries that are actually in the NFL, right? You got the Falcons, Saints, you got uh, Cowboys, Eagles, um, Steelers, Browns, kind of no Steelers, Ravens more than Steelers, yeah. Browns. But like I said, there's not a ton of rivalries in the NFL, but the Saints, Falcons are definitely one of them. So having your first career start being on the road in a hostile environment like that, that's going to be a tough task, but it'll, so it'd be interesting to see uh, how he responds to that. Jonathan, what, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I was happy that it happened. Could it have happened a few weeks earlier? Sure. Uh, do I think he was re- just based on what I've heard from the coach? Do I think he was ready week four or five in that, in that case? I don't know if he was ready for it at that point. Um, I'm excited, you know, right. uh, to like, you know, I went back and watched, uh, some high, I, I watched, uh, like the whole first half of the, um, game against the jets in the preseason. Uh, then I watched some, some, uh, tape, you know, some videos of, of other, of other folks, like just talking about some different things that he did, mm-hmm. um, had, had some mistakes, had some interceptions, um, but overall, he, you know, going back and watching it again, what I liked about it is immediately he passes the eye test. Like he looks like a court, like an NFL quarterback. Right. Uh, he has the yeah. Was he going against starters? No. Uh, but at the same time, he was still in an NFL game against NFL players, uh, or mostly NFL players. <laughs> Uh, and you know, he was hitting things on time. He was, uh, you know, making the right reads in the vast majority of situations. Um, you know, some of the balls were a little high, but, you know, just watching him and his footwork that, uh, you know, hopefully he's been working on a lot and, uh, you know, his footwork in some, in some cases was absolutely amazing. Right. Uh, and I, you know, so I'm just, I'm looking forward to that because Mariota, even in his good days to me, just never really passes the eye test. I don't know if it's his delivery. I don't know. It, you know, uh, just him, just his throwing motion, you know, did it look right to me, but then again, neither did Philip rivers. And that guy had a long, you know, pretty successful for the most part yeah. NFL I mean, career. But. Yeah, you don't have to fit a particular mold, but I get what you're saying, though. Like, to, going back to, like, Toby's point, talking about, like, the Browns game, right? You had uh, 
you know, seven completions in that game, right? Out mm-hmm. of out of 19 attempts. And this is something that has caught my like caught my attention really. Like like with with Arthur's use of Mariota or not use or distribution, however you want to call it. Like you could definitely tell that the passing game was limited, right? And you know, not trying to turn it on to a uh, dump on Mariota session, but you know, when you have completions of seven, 14, 13, eight, you know, that's that's four professional games in a row with less than uh, 15 completions. That's yeah, man, you, you can't have that, right? No, and all those games, obviously, you're passing for less than you know, 200 yards uh, a game. He finishes what I'm going to pretty much call his uh, career here in Atlanta with, I was actually kind of shocked, a little over 2,000 yards, 2,200, 2,219 yards uh, for, oh, I just lost, I just had it, the touchdowns. It was just in my face. (laughs) Now I'm going to have to get all crazy. Hold it on. must have been below 20. That's why you can't find it. It must be. <laughs> yeah. it must be. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, all right. You know what? I've done derailed it enough. Somehow I done got on fantasy. Don't know nobody care about that. <laughs> That's crazy. Somehow I done got uh, on. Tw- it was uh, 22, 19, uh, 7.4 yards per attempt average. Uh, let's see, completion percentage, 61.3, 15 touchdowns to 15. nine interceptions. Right. And well, uh, so it was a grand total of, of 19 touchdowns, which is what I was getting at. So he, oh, yeah. So you have 15 touchdowns passing. He had four touchdowns running. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. So he accounted for 19 touchdowns with nine interceptions. And but how, many, how many fumbles did he lose, too? Yeah, well, then that's – and that that's the part that he wasn't like, you know, he didn't move the needle enough, right? Uh, we knew that he was a bridge quarterback to begin with. Uh, mm-hmm. Like we were hoping of against hopes. Like I think me and Toby had said early in the off season that if either Mariota or Ritter hits, then it's a boom. Like, honestly, the, you know, we're, we're hyping up Ritter a lot, but keep in mind, guys, like he's a third round pick. Like third round QBs don't tend heck, QBs don't tend to hit often anyway. If yep. we can absolutely get lucky and and Ritter does hit, like that's gonna be astonishing. Yeah. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is was supposed to be a generational talent. He's deep into his second uh year, and he's just now starting to look like what you thought you were getting in the first round. And, well, you know, and you know, to his credit, he hasn't thrown an interception in over a month now. Right. Uh, you know, since October, mm-hmm. and you know, in that time, he's got ten touchdowns and what have you. And they absolutely waxed uh, the oh, Titans. Tennessee, dude, they weekend. killed Tennessee. Uh, yeah. It was crazy. Uh, now there's talk in Tennessee, and not to get too far off the top. Now there's talk in Tennessee of Vrabel maybe going to go to college. Uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of weird. Yeah, ain't nothing. Talk about ain't, that. ain't no telling what's going on up there. <laughs> But yeah. that's but that kind of emphasizes the point, right? Is what I what I would love to you know, or what I want to encourage Falcons fans. I tried to do it on Thursday. I don't know if the message come across real well, but we definitely need to like, just like with Mariota, you know, even more so, give Ritter that that grace, you know. Of this was, this was the 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 message that me and Toby had more than once. If we're going to watch these kind of mistakes, I'd much rather watch it from a rookie implying yeah. Yeah. that there's still going to be a ton of mistakes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, most, yeah, most <clears throat> definitely. I mean, I'm not really concerned about the mistakes. I just want to see the guy play. Uh, I believe in his leadership, and I do believe that he has what it takes to get guys and motivate guys to want to play for him. And, um, you know, as Arthur Smith said, he will have to prove this week to the guys that – they can respect him and he can come out there and play at a high level for them to be a, you know, followers of what he's putting out there on the field. So I, I do believe that he's going to bring that. I, I loved in the preseason because one of the things I noticed is that when he messed up on a play, they would come back and call that same play again and he would correct it and get re- good results from it. 
Uh, you saw that in the Jaguars game. I mean, he threw an interception about the first play. But then right. after he calmed down, they called a nice quick game, which looked actually like a quick game <laughs> mm-hmm. compared to Mariota. And they had a nice drive down there for a nice score on that second drive. And I, I love to see the poise that he presents. And I, I think that already gives him a leg up as far as becoming an NFL quarterback. Now, I, I believe he's the future of the Atlanta Falcons. I don't have no doubt in my mind about that, especially if we continue to build the defense up the way that I'm hoping that we build it up going into 2023. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the biggest – well, the biggest problem right now is people are looking at Ritter and they're, they're also going to look at Brock Purdy. And they're going to say – Mr. Irrelevant, and he's not just coming in and managing the game. He's not just just don't make don't kill us. He's not doing that. He fought out, you know, against a, a good defense. You, know, you say what you want about the Bucks' offense, but against a good defense, shredded him, right. absolutely yeah. shredded him. And that's he's kind of blowing the bell curve right now for Ritter because uh, I think a lot of people are going to see that and be like. We we like why can't we have that? Right. Uh, and we can't have that because we don't have the talent on offense. We don't have the talent on the defense. That if you do, you know, to have a guy be free to make mistakes and know that it's not going to kill you because you have a defense that can back you up. Right. Right. Uh, and that's that, that's the biggest difference between a, a Brock Purdy and a, a Desmond Ritter right now is Ritter has to understand that like there are certain situations that you cannot uh, you know put your defense in a bad situation right yeah. uh, hell even if hell, even if we put the defense in a good situation there's no guarantee anything's gonna happen uh, right. you put that defense in San Francisco in a good position it's almost guaranteed minus some rare uh, misses but it's almost guaranteed they're not gonna give up uh, anything yeah, when right. when they have the leverage so right. And that's, and that's the thing that, you know, I hope, you know, folks remember like what, you know, what initially, you know, got made the switch happen was, I mean, the, the lack of accuracy, the lack of being able to execute the offense, you know, that's, you know, so that's what Ritter needs to come in and do. Now he had those, uh, you know, some of those issues, the accuracy issues coming out of college, he wasn't the most accurate quarterback. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he come out of college with, I think, a 62% completion percentage. Um, then plenty of times uh, he had the um, habit of throwing behind his targets uh, a little too often. So those are the things that he's going to have to look to uh, be better on. Like I did a thread on Twitter for all y'all that, that follow me out there, um, you know, showing – highlighting some of the things that were that have us excited is that that ability to step up in the pocket and drive the ball uh and and make those uh those crossing routes and those embrace those those slants you know Mm -hmm. actually work when you have uh you know drake london beating a guy on the inside you know he's got to be able to put it in front of him and not behind Mm -hmm. him you know yep um, if he can do that on a consistent basis, yes, uh, you can. You know, we can chuckle all we want to, but yes, he'll look like Brock Purdy last night. You know, uh, you play within the confines of the system. You know, right now, while you're getting your feet under you, you know, the, we don't yeah. need the the ad libbing, and you know, like he gives you the same athleticism as Mariota, not the same. Like same open field speed, like mm-hmm. like he's he's just. He's, I think he's not he's not the he's not the shifty. He doesn't have right. quite the shiftiness of yes. a of like Mariota Mariota. is more of a natural runner. I'll say that. Yeah. Like, um, but he still gives you if a play breaks down, he can take off. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, did it plenty but, in the in the preseason. Right, but what I think he gives you is not in not a reliant on that. Mm-hmm. Where at times it seemed like that's what Mariota was relying on, right? Yeah, it's the problem that we that you hear a lot of us, you know, uh, people who like try to like be analysts or whatever you want to call us, you know, that's the problem that we have with mobile quarterbacks 
is it is when they become overly reliant on their legs to succeed. Um, yep. Like you want them legs to be a, a weapon, not the weapon, if that makes sense. Yes. It does. Yeah. And, you know, make it like if it's a design run, okay, that's fine. Right. But when it comes to running on a design pass play, uh, now granted, Early on, as a rookie, you know they're probably going to just say, "Hey, if if you see, the, you know, if if you don't see it and you see a way to run, go ahead and take it." Uh, they're probably going to simplify that for him. Uh, but as he grows into his role, hopefully, uh, hopefully things go well for him, you know, and and what have you. So, but as he as he matures into that, then it becomes okay, let me use my feet to get out of this sticky situation so that I can give my guys more time to open up and yep. keep looking down the field for as long as I possibly can. But now if, it, if it's just wide open, like man coverage, everybody's back's turned to you, they're way down the field, and you can get 10, 15, 20 yards out of that, take that all day, every day. Uh, you want it to be somewhere between – Opportunistic. Like, I yeah, I must say, I know he doesn't have the size of a Josh Allen. No. So I don't necessarily want him running, you know, quarterback power. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you want it to be more like a Mahomes and a Aaron Rodgers in his heyday. Of, mm-hmm. You know, I'm breaking contain. I'm scrambling out of the pocket. But like you said, eyes downfield, unless it's, you know, wide open pastures, you know, type deal. Yeah. yeah. But even, and even then, you know, uh, you know, I would still take, let's say it was, you know, second and 10 or whatever, and he waits and waits and waits, uses his legs, runs around, uh, and maybe we're all sitting just just run, just run, but he's still looking for that, you know, to make that play downfield as long as he doesn't make, you know, a dumb a dumb decision at that point. Uh, if he gets five yards out of that and leaves us with a third and five, I'm fine with that. Third man is far more, uh, you know, far more uh, desirable than uh, – obviously turn over or take an unnecessary sack. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So the other part of like uh, the presser today was we got word. Well, uh, I say before the presser, you saw that the Falcons uh, sign Logan Woodside off of the Tennessee Titans practice squad. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that was kind of a head scratcher because there wasn't an immediate course corresponding move. Now you knew one was going to have to come. And the one that did come was, um, uh, Nate Ladman got released from the 53 and then they signed Javelin something, Javelin something, a defensive back. I missed back that one. Yeah, I can't even remember his squad. name. But it's, I did, it's, yeah. It's something of that nature. I'm probably butchering it as I do names. Uh, <laughs> but um, So Logan Woodside was interesting because now that gave you three quarterbacks on, on roster. Yeah, mm-hmm. because a lot of people were initially were like, "Oh, well, they signed him to the practice squad." No, you can't go from practice squad to practice squad. Mm-hmm. You know, you had you if you're signing somebody off a of practice squad, they go straight to the 53. So, in the press conference today, <coughs> you know where Arthur Smith, um, you know, officially announced Ritter as the starter. He also made mention that Mariota wasn't in the building uh, because of a knee issue or like a knee flare up um, that it was just getting reported uh, today. And now there's talks that he might be heading to IR, uh, mm-hmm. which would have some people thinking, Oh, is that the reason why Desmond's getting a start? But what uh, Smith cleared that up? What did he say there, Toby on that? It had nothing to do with that. It was, it was all performance based, you know, right. and, uh, it had nothing to do with the knee issue at all. Because at first, I almost jumped to that conclusion, too. I'm not even going to lie. Right. I almost jumped to that conclusion, too, until I heard what he said. And um, I'm glad that he did that. Because, too, you don't want to say it has to do with, you know, Mario to going on an injury. Because that kind of helps. That kind of hurts the confidence of the quarterback that's being chosen. Because then he'd be thinking, well, dang, so that's the only reason I got the job. And Ritter is not that type of quarterback where you want to say things like that with the type of quarterback that he is. He 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 loves the encouragement and and the hard stuff that 
you know, Arthur Smith brings to him. And uh, if he hears something like that, that he just got the job because of injury, that wouldn't have been a good, you know, decision to say something like that. So I'm glad that he cleared that up and that it's not about the injury to Mariota. But, uh, I, I, you know, much respect to Mariota, man. Much respect. Oh, I know sure. everybody loves him on that team and things of that nature. But I'm so glad. I'm just – I'm going to tell you all right now. I'm so glad that Ritter is going to get the opportunity – in these four games to really audition for this team and show that he can be the future for the Atlanta Falcons and this fan base. He said he is not leaving here until he gets a championship for this team. And I'm actually hoping that can come true in my lifetime before I leave this earth. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yep. It's like, yep. It, it's, it's, I'm glad you said that as far as, as far as Mariota goes, because like he's been like a punching bag in a sense, you know, most of the season. Um, oddly enough, he has a ton of, um, you know, fans out there that are as loyal to him as I was to Ryan when he was here, uh, which was, like, surprising in, in a lot of ways, um, you know, being that he just did get here. But um, I thought to myself, like, I'm glad he did what he did. And the reason why I say that is because, he all in a way, even though it didn't work out, you know, at the end, in a lot of ways, he he validated the vision that Arthur Smith has, right? Like mm-hmm. you saw, like the vision of, you know, being able to run the football and have a, you know, athletic quarterback that can also be a threat to run, mm-hmm. like that's the formula that you saw up in Tennessee that was so successful. And when he first got here, he was like, you know, okay, how is he going to adapt it? Now, he adapted it, obviously, for the roster that he had last year. Uh, And in a lot of ways, I know everybody thinks that this one's worse, but I really feel like a lot of, like, offensively last year was a lot worse. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, because you had a quarterback that was stationary behind a line that, you know, wasn't fully gelling and understanding yet. And also, like – absolutely bad at certain positions i'm looking at you mayfield um but anyway (laughs) like so with ryan not being able to move he just absolutely got land based back there right yeah and so it made you go oh crap does like does smith know what he's doing you know what i'm saying and but to see it when it was working with Mariota, like when Mariota was making the good decisions you know making the correct reads and all that like it was working and it was a, a tough offense to stop. Uh, and it was a, it yeah. was a, a meat grinder type offense. Mm-hmm. And so that gives me hope for the future. Right. You know, and, and in that aspect, uh, I will always think, you know, fondly of Mariota's time in here. And, and I tried to keep all that in, even in my frustrations, you know, tried to keep that kind of stuff in light, you know, he was coming off of two years of not starting, getting thrown into a, a situation that he knew, unless he just absolutely balled out on, like they were going to move on from it. So I, I'll say this about Mariota: like, <coughs> has, has have there been times where, uh, are have there been times where I, you know, I'm watching a game, I'm like. What are you doing? You know, the, like, it's especially the Panthers game. There were, there were, that was a bad game. That was, that was absolutely his worst game of the season. Uh, and honestly, like, I think, I think a lot of people will agree with this, obviously, is, uh, you, you know, you come out of that game and you, you know, that was a Thursday night game. You had sort of a mini buy. Everybody was like, why don't yeah, we make the switch to Ritter now? Because that, that was the game he's literally cool? falling down just, Throwing right. it, you know, over and his shoulder were, and hoping home for the next two games, right, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so I think, like, it, I way, think that was the case. Been, you know, a, a good way to to go about it. <clears throat> but, 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 like I said, like at no point this year have I turned off a game uh, in disgust because now, I may not have been like super focused on the game. For you know, once things got to a certain point, but that's only really been the the one game. the The Panthers game was the only game I feel like we I never felt we had, like we had a shot. 
Even yeah, in the Bengals, Bengals game. I don't know, dude. Yeah. That Bengals game, you got – you were getting uh, bad raised pretty quick. No, nah, but, but I mean, they, you know, they righted the ship a little bit, got back into it a little bit, scored some points. They, they actually – but it just felt like the Panthers game, there was not the fight that we've seen almost the rest of the yeah. year. Right. Um, and I don't know if that's just fatigue because that's pretty late in the season. We hadn't had our uh, oh, bye so week we, yet. So we were on a short week. We had, a, you know, then you come back the, the next game and you now had like a week and a half to kind of recuperate a little bit. But that game just seemed like we were just run down. I don't know what it was. But that that game, that was the one game that I have I kind of like started doing other stuff instead of focusing on the game. And so, I, I you know, and, and if nothing else, the offense as a whole, by and large, has been fun to watch, minus some missed passes here and there. But like the running game, which he's been a, a huge facilitator of, um, Watching him escape pressure when when that does uh, when that is needed, like seeing him move around the pocket and stuff like that, has been fun. Um, and I also think he should he's a really good dude who oh, yeah. did the best he who did, who's trying to do the best he can uh, with the talent that he's got, both in himself and with what's on the roster. And you know, it, you know, it, it just it just wasn't meant to be. Hopefully. Yeah. It's meant to be for Ritter because I like I like the kid. I like what I've the, the like what of him I've read and like mm. how he's had to you know everywhere he goes he had to earn the right to play. Like there was no it wasn't just like hey it come on to Cincinnati. To <laughs> right and Zach Wilson's a guy you go to the combine and everybody got wowed by this crazy throw that he does at the combine. And they're like, Oh yeah. my God, look at the arm on this kid. And now he's, you know, now maybe he writes the ship because you know, they're putting him they're They're ben- like benching and benching him. And maybe that he can get it right up here. Mm-hmm. And he can, and, and all the things that he needs to do because he's got the talent, but whether or not he's got it here, we don't know. But I'd I think rather, that's, no, I that's the thing say, with I'd Renner. much rather have it up here. You know, then like I would, never, I'd rather have a guy who's got it in between the, in between the ears, and may yep. not necessarily have all the talent in the world. Um, right, and and that's and that's what I think Ritter is. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I now whether or not he can Put it execute on that is a different matter. But like mental toughness, I don't think this kid has a problem with it. Yeah. Uh, and I just I I, I make ex- I am super super excited. However, the rest of the season ends up to see what Ritter can do. And just like going into the season proper, the thing I wanted to see from the Falcons was I wanted to see progress from last year. Mm -hmm. And I think even in the losses, uh, the wins, it doesn't matter. Like I see in the defense, while sometimes it has been absolutely horrible, like the last like month or so hasn't been real bad uh, as far as points given up. Like they've kept us yeah. in games. Yep. Uh, the team just plays hard, and I've seen progress throughout the season. That's all I want to see from Ritter is game one to, to game four. I want to see okay, you get in, you know, you're under the, the spotlight that first game. How do you react? And then you're, you know, any mistakes you make, how do you learn from them? Move on to the second game. What kind and of see if you can uh, grow and do yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Like that's all I really care about right now is is this a guy that we can that we can take into the future? All all I want to see <laughs> is can he consistently hit Drake London in the end zone? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's what I need. Yep. To, you know what I'm saying? Like, can you can you consistently make use of your best weapon? Yeah. yeah. And right now, your best weapon is Drake London. Now well, and, when, when Kyle Pitts comes back, you know, whether it's um, well, more than likely next year, even though somebody put up a funny meme of Kevin Nash standing up, uh, you know, from the wheelchair, you know, seeing that, that uh, Pitts is, or uh, that Ritter starting. Anyway, yeah. Uh, if like when Pitts comes back, you know, can you hit, you know, can you hit these weapons? You've spent yep. two first rounders on, uh, Phenomenal pass catchers. You know, now can we make use of them? This run game is awesome, and I love it. I'm, mm-hmm. fin- I'm glad that we finally have a run game that we can count on uh, mm-hmm. week in and week out. But 
you know, can you make folks pay for stacking the box? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing. Like if we can do that, honestly, like the stat that I think has been the, the kind of the biggest glaring uh, <laughs> condemnation of Barry Uh If the guys weren't getting open uh, and, and it was just no separation and, and he was having to hold the ball and all that stuff, which I think he did a little bit of that early on. I think he, he progressed as well. He got a little bit better about uh, some of the reads. Not every single one of them was good, but most of them were okay. His biggest problem was 30% of his passes to – well, you know, as an example, 30% of his passes that he threw at Pitts were uncatchable. Right. If we can bring that percentage to, I don't if know, can, somewhere between 15 and 20%. I was about to say, if you can bring it in the homes, which was, I think was like 16%. Yeah, you know, if you can get it to say around twenty percent, I'm not going to put him at Mahomes, okay. But if you can put it at twenty percent, uncatchable, some of those are just going to be throwaways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you can keep it at like twenty percent, like right there, then that's going to be huge because our guys get open, like our guys get separation. Well, and you, like I said before, you spent two first rounders on guys who or make their bones off of contested catches and tough catches and, mm-hmm. you know, big body and being able to, to, you know, out, out physical somebody, you just have mm-hmm. to get it to them, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he's shown Desmond Ritter has shown that he trusts his receivers, especially the tall ones. He would throw it to them and let them make plays. And this is something you didn't see a lot of for Marcus. Like you were saying, Jonathan, he would, just seemed like he would hold on to the ball, like he was unsure and just scared to kind of let the ball go and just allow his guys to make plays on the football. Now, Desmond yep. has shown that he can do this at the college level. Now, I want to see him be able to do it at the NFL level. And uh, since what? him and London have worked together in the offseason, that's going to be interesting to see if that chemistry translates on the field, what they've done with Jordan Palmer in the off season when they work with him out there in, in California. So I'm, I'm very excited to see if they can develop early chemistry because they work together so much like they did in the off season before the season started. Right. All right. Well, yeah. We'll it, go ahead, John. I, I was going to say like he, the, the, uh, at, at the end of the, I think it was the lions game. You know, at the end of that game, he's th- like fourth down, you yeah, know, we need, we, we, we had, yeah, I, told him, I mean, he's not, he's not exactly, uh, you know, uh, the biggest tree out there in the forest, <laughs> and, but he, th- he threw it up there and said, and basically was like, I'm going to put it up there and let my guy try to do something yeah. with it. That's it. Yeah. And that's, you know, and at times that's what you're going to need. You're going to need somebody to like do the whole, uh, you know, meme, like Jamar Chase is down there somewhere, you know, yep. kind of deal. Um, like Drake London's down there somewhere, you know, and let him go and fight for it. Yep. All right, do some uh, like final thoughts on on how you think, uh, like like Ritter's first, you know, first uh, performance goes as as we go ahead and, and wrap up this little short little two like Monday night thing that we're going to release tomorrow. Toby, I want to start with you. How do you think it's going to go for Ritter? I want to see Ritter utilize CP84 a little bit more. Um, this is something that Matt Ryan did be able to do last year where my, where CP84 was more involved in the passing game. And it was something that, unfortunately, we didn't see Marcus be able to take advantage of during the second half of the season because they tried to get CP84 more involved in the passing game, but Marcus was unable to take advantage of it. Now, we've seen Ritter at the college level with Ford have some success throwing to the running backs at the college level. So I want to see if him and CP84 can develop a little bit more chemistry because CP, when he's used more on those wheel routes and things like that and getting out in that five wide, which was also limited this year, I want to see Ritter and see how he excels in that five wide offense um, this last four games. So they're like Jonathan, I want to see him progress from week from, you know, the first week he starts with the Saints, because he's going to see a lot. This is a blessing for him, because he's going to see a lot of defensive, different defensive schemes these last four games. So this is great 
for him going into next season. So I want to see mm-hmm. how he adapts to that and 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 be able to really read what's going on in, in the uh, schemes they're going to be throwing at him, especially this first game with the Saints. There you go. Jonathan, what's your final thoughts on, on Ritter's start down in, down in Stinky Town? Don't try to play hero ball. There you go. Like, like stay within the system. Stay Play within yourself, okay? Not telling you don't do – uh, you know, don't take chances and, and like like we just talked about letting letting your guys try to go and fight for the ball and things like that, but pick your spots when you do it. And uh, you know, just try to just try to play within yourself and you know and and get your feet wet and get in there and make mistakes and learn from the mistakes and hopefully the mistakes aren't back breaking. Right. You know, but but if they are uh, you know, just try to use it as a learning opportunity. Uh, you know, move on with it and and learn from it and try to get better every single week. Uh, and that's all I really hope to see. And, and like I said, I just want to see him try to play within himself. Yep. I think for me, one of the one of the key things from Smith's press conference, somebody asked him about the playbook, and he said that he wouldn't have to limit his playbook at all with Ritter. And um, I think that that is – that's an encouraging statement um, from uh, Coach Smith. So what I'm what I'm looking for is obviously like consistency in the passing game, I guess. And I'm not saying that, oh, if he throws an interception that it's, you know, inconsistent. No, I want him to be able to do what I saw in the Detroit game and in the Jacksonville game, you know, hit those play action passes. You know, hit those in breaking slants. These are staples of, you know, Arthur Smith's system. You have to be able to hit those. You have to be able to hit those, um, those level, you know, the, the level routes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that, that Smith loves to run. Like, you have to be able to do that. And I, so I want to see you, like, complete those. I want to see you play like well within the system that we have seen uh, Smith roll out, you know, through the preseason last year and now this year, you know. Um, but also, like, I want to see confidence. I think that was the biggest <clears throat> thing. I don't think – I think, you know, Toby, you hit on earlier. I don't think Mariota ever seemed confident on the field. Like, you know, with his reads or with his progressions, like just – I want to see confidence and I want to see, you know, the ball come out of your hand with some action, you know, but all in all, I think it's a winnable game. Like the saints haven't yeah. looked like world beaters either. They're still rolling out Andy Dalton. Um, a lot of their guys are, are hurt and, you know, out of the game. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're over here getting fined for flopping basically. Uh, you know, so, I mean, they, they're, they're a hot mess too. So, mm-hmm. you know, capitalize on, on playing, you know, against a team that's also a hot mess. Yeah, man, this is a huge game for the Falcons because, see, if they lose this game, they're going to be in last place. I mean, that's it. we see the Carolina Panthers have now jumped over the Falcons. Even though they have a tied record, I think they hold a tiebreaker. And they they won more games in the division. So, you know, mm-hmm. this is a game that the Falcons really can't afford to lose if they're trying to stay in the divisional hunt because it's still out there in front of them. But, right. if, man, they can't lose this game, man. I mean, you do not want to be in last place behind the Saints and get swept by the Saints. Now, you just yeah. don't want to do that. No, you don't. You definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to – like, that's the only thing. Like, to be completely honest, would I, would I love for us to win the division? Because that's really going to be the only way we get into the playoffs. Yeah. yeah would, I, would I love to win the division? Absolutely. Uh, is that uh, necessary for me to enjoy the rest of the year? Absolutely not. Uh, like I, want, I would love for us to do it. But because, <laughs> because if we do if, – if in order for us to do it, we pretty much have to win out. And yeah. if we win out, then I'm going to be happy the next four weeks. So uh, <laughs> then that, that will be awesome. Uh, and that will have meant we would have beaten the Saints, so we would have gotten swept, and we would beat Tom Brady for the first time in our career. Just so happens to be on p- potentially his last year of his career and on probably the worst team that he's played on in his whole t- career. But I'll take it. I don't care. <laughs> you know? well, I ain't worried about the caveats. Just, <laughs> just one time. That's, right. That's it. 
All right. Well, man, that was good. That was good. That was a good little, uh, little, little wind up there. Like I said, I'd been, I would have been remiss not to get y'all's opinion on the Ritter thing. Uh, especially with the official announcement, you know, coming today. But as always, yep. Falcons fans, y'all can uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Grim1128, G R I M M1128. Toby? Toby D1991. Jonathan, are you still the mystery? <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want to look me up, uh, you can look me up at, it's at Jonathan, uh, Jonathan M. Holder, uh, mm-hmm. is, my, is my Twitter handle. So. There you go. He tweets less than Toby, so it's that's on y'all if y'all want. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. Try, I'm, I, uh, but you know, by the time we get to the end of the season, I want to try to pick that up a little bit. But you, uh, you know, you we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Anyway, keep an eye on the channel as I'll probably try to have something uh, shorter out on Friday. Uh, but as always, Falcons fans, rise up! Rise up! Rise up! <laughs>